what we're about to watch is a program called Flashpoint. Now, Flashpoint has a bunch of interesting characters on it. This episode has Marjorie Taylor Greene, but these are the key players here. We've got, from left to right, Gene Bailey. He's the host. Lance Walnaugh, Hank Kuhneman, Dutch Sheets, and Mario Murillo. Big players in the quote-unquote prophetic game. These people claim to be prophets of God, and they prophesied that Donald Trump was going to win in 2016. That gave them the boldness to believe that they actually were talking to God, and they prophesied he was going to win again in 2020. Well, guess what? When he didn't win in 2020, they freaked out, lost their minds, and said, no, you're not the real prophets. I've watched part of this episode just privately, just to myself, absolutely unhinged stuff, seriously, absolutely unhinged stuff. They pray over Marjorie Taylor Greene and all kinds of other stuff. It, it's nutty. So I wanted to give it a watch through, see what they have to say for themselves, because it gets weird. And we're going to play some Final Fantasy VIII while we watch. So let's get into it. Look at this. This is this is like it's like they're throwing a concert or something. Fog machines and everything. You got to be kidding me. Seriously, they're they're throwing stuff. They're blowing out fog machines and this is nuts, dude. This this is crazy. Are there any patriots in the house tonight? This is supposed to be a religious program run by prophets of God. Come on! Come on! I don't even hear you! Come on, all right. I think this isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. Last half. All right, we're gonna start over. Here we go. And when I count down, I want to hear the biggest Georgia rebel yell you've ever heard. I know that's not uh, probably appropriate to say. Why wouldn't that be appropriate to say? I don't understand. The biggest Georgia rebel yell? What's inappropriate about that? So I just go ahead and start. You might as well get used to it. All right, here we go. I need to hear if there's patriots in the house in three, two, one. <laughs> You may be seated. We got a lot to do. We got a long way to get there. All right. Well, it's so good to be back in my home state of Georgia. Amen. All right. Before we go any further, I make it a point in every Flashpoint event that we do, I want to honor, and I'm going to ask you to stand. Any veteran in the house, please stand. Uh, here we go. They're fetishizing war and worshiping veterans and stuff. It's just creepy, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And we here at Flashpoint, and I believe here in the state of Georgia and those watching on television around the world, we believe this to be true. And I want to hear it if you agree with it, that we, we on a shadow of a towel, leave no man behind. Amen. Amen. Wow. So many great things. So many good things to talk about. Those of you watching on television, you should have been here. And you, and you want to know what you missed? You missed the wheel of woke earlier today. How about that wheel of woke? <laughs> okay, I don't know what the wheel of woke is, but all right. Oh, that's great. I'm uh, just telling you, I'm in so much trouble. <clears throat> I'm in so much trouble. Anyway. All right, let's get things started. Would you welcome some of my friends, Lance, Hank, Dutch, and Mario. Come on up, Tim. Now, 
Yeah, these are the prophets or, or so-called prophets of God, Dutch Sheets, Lance Walna, Mario Murillo, Hank Kuhneman. These guys are the Nutter Butters, and apparently they've invited Marjorie Taylor Greene in to talk to them today, so it's bound to be crazy. Hey! Hello, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, get get to it, guys. Oh, yeah. All right, sit down. Sit down. All right. Oh, my God, these people are showboaters. All right, let's just skip forward a little further at 524 here. See if we can jump forward. Down the row here, and I want to hear your first thoughts coming into Atlanta. Lance. My first thoughts coming into Atlanta is that this is where the real Holy Spirit resistance is going to show up. And of course, Holy Spirit resistance means where Donald Trump is going to have to fight the hardest to win the next election, basically, right? They have seamlessly mixed church and state together at this point. You know, the devil has a weird kind of thing he's been doing in Georgia. And I'm serious about this. We're gonna to begin to see that thing dismantled because the Spirit of God's doing it. Amen. Amen. Pastor Hank. I agree with Lance. You know, there's a, a phrase that you, that are in the South, use that it's kind of uncommon for us. That wait, wait a minute, Nebraska. wait, wait, wait. Well, I was going to say wait, the no, you, wait, you in the south. <laughs> well, I'm from the I'm from the north. How many are from? He he lives in Omaha, Hank Kuhneman. He he has a a uh, what do you call it? like a a church or whatever in Omaha, Nebraska. So not really technically part of the north or the south because Nebraska didn't exist at the time of the Civil War, did it? But. They don't. I don't think Nebraska really considers themselves part of the South. But anyway, let's uh, let's keep listening here. Up around the north. <laughs> yeah, look at this. How many in Midwest? There you go. So you guys use this term. Are you ready for what it is? Fixing. You're always fixing stuff. Fixing. <laughs> and so uh, your election down here needs some fixing. And I'm here to announce that God knows it needs fixing. And so the reason I believe that I'm here is because Jesus, when he went into a region, there was something that happened in Mark chapter 4. You follow it in Mark 5. Demons began to scream out. And guess what happened? They went into some pigs. And the pigs began to squeal. I'm telling you, Georgia, there's a whole lot of squealing that's about to happen. What the hell does that mean? This is weird. It's going to expose and reveal the truth. God is fixing this country. Amen. 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 There you go. All right. That was good. That was good. <laughs> fixing. You're fixing. We'll let you keep that. Okay. Dutch Sheets. Dutch. Yeah. Dutch Sheets is a complete wingnut i think i've done one video on him before but let me see if i can find a clip from him yeah this one is from july 8th 2021 so one year old almost exactly at this point listen to what he says in this this is dutch sheets in fact this is dutch sheets on flashpoint the flashpoint tv show it's god's timing and he's now he's now bringing this anointing and signs and wonders are going to start following this quickly i know of at least i know of three situations personally of people that were raised from the dead by a doctor during covid one of those people raised went into the room after the person died with covid one of those people the death certificate had already been signed 
I would love some evidence. I will take any evidence of this. Absolutely anything, please. And this person was raised from the dead. Now, they can't talk about this because they could get in trouble, believe it or not, f for doing this and for... I don't. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. Uh, you're going to have to give me more than that. So what, what he's doing is making a claim, and when evidence is requested or expected, he says, well, I can't give you any evidence because they're trying to cover it up. The cabal is trying to hide it. You're going to have to give me more than that, Dutch. You know, talking about it. But I'm just saying this is beginning to happen, and we're just getting started. So anyway, that's Dutch's sheets. Uh, that's who we're about to deal with here. That, that's who this guy is on stage. Let's, let's keep listening and see what Dutch sheets has to say. Thank you. Well, I was just in Atlanta a week ago. And we, had a, we had a great meeting. I became more convinced than ever before that God is about to do an amazing shift in the state of Georgia. And then you know, people have been waiting for this supposed shift to happen for like, who knows how long at this point. Is it ever going to happen? I'll believe it when I see it. The city of Atlanta. God is not intimidated by the left. He's not intimidated by liberal strongholds. He's not intimidated by big cities. He loves the prospect of moving among yes. millions of yes. people in Amen. population centers. And Atlanta, get ready, because you're about to be visited by Holy Spirit. Amen. This guy is a true nutcase. I've talked about him a few times, too. Jesus said, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything on earth, it will be done. Uh, I don't remember that verse. I, I mean, it's possible that's in there, but... Did I miss something? Like, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just not remembering that at all. So I want to tell you why that number, if any two of you, there are two streams in America that have been separated, the conservatives and the revivalists. One has been in the political camp, the other has been working in the church. The devil has told you those in the church, don't make any political comments. Who told them? The devil has told you those in the church don't make any political comments. Got it. The devil said that. Okay. Well, actually, the U.S. government told the church, if you make political comments, then you have to pay taxes. That's all. That's the only barrier here. If you make political comments, just like any Muslim church, if Muslim churches make political comments, they have to pay taxes too. But he's taken that to be... a you know, persecution of the Christian church. They're being persecuted for what they believe. Ridiculous. The devil has told those in the conservative movement, stay out of the churches. But those two forces, when they come together. I.e. when church and state mix. Go on, what happens? I'm gonna try it again. Those two forces, when they, they come, come together. together. Things are possible. Amen. Wow. All right. Wow. We're going to get things started the right way. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh. Playing, saying the Pledge of Allegiance in a religious event. It's just concerning all the way across the board, honestly. By the by, in Final Fantasy VIII, I basically have to battle about 20 to 22 Tonberries before the King Tonberry appears, and that is... A, a GF after I defeat him I can take him with me basically and I usually try to count how many Tonberries I've battled by keeping track of how many AP I get because I get one AP per Tonberry that I defeat so I can just go back and check my GF and see I've been keeping track on this one I fought 12 see 12 of 30 for this thing here so anyway yeah I, I have about eight more or so Tonberries to fight before I finally 
fight the King Tonberry. Okay, let's keep listening. Flag will be right there. All right, let's say it together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Dude, did somebody just mess up the Pledge of Allegiance? Did they not know the words in it? One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Now, if everyone, please remain standing for the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, my God. Can you get any more political than this? The answer is yes. I know what's in this clip. Just wait. It gets absolutely nutty. Absolutely nutty. Oh, say can you see? I'm skipping through some of this to avoid copyright problems with the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, I was wondering if they were going to skip the hidden verse, the, the missing verse in the Star Spangled Banner that was removed. I don't know if you guys were aware, but there is a missing verse in the Star Spangled Banner. Let me just read it for you. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, so on and so forth, right? Here are the missing verses. In full glory reflected now shines in the stream, tis the Star Spangled Banner, oh long may it wave, or the land of the free and the home of the brave. And then it continues. And where is that band who so vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star spangled banner in triumph doth wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Cute little uh, section there about owning slaves that they decided to remove, I guess, for one reason or another. I mean, the Founding Fathers thought it was good enough to have in there, didn't they? Why did they remove that? Beyond me. Let me skip past the Star Spangled Banner because I'm not a nationalistic fruitcake and I don't really care about the song. Okay, let's keep listening from here, I think. Okay, finally, finally, we're getting to some, we're getting to some real content here. Let's keep listening. Tulsa. Anybody here? Thank you. Do we go? We go? No, you're staying here. We're staying here. We're staying here. <laughs> so, uh, and what happened in Tulsa really was a landmark event. And I, we talked about it afterwards. And we really felt like, wow, something, God's really taking this thing to another level. Um, it's humbling, but at the same time, there's this driven peace inside of each one of us here on the platform for, for who we are as Americans and who we are as Christians. And let me tell you, and, and one of the things that Mario said early on in the Flashpoint really helped me. Because I'm a student of revival, I study that, I've had a TV program about it and Flashpoint came out of nowhere and I'm like, ah, trying to figure this thing out, how do all these things go together? And Mario, you said something on the show one night. He said, if we don't do this, we won't have a tent to preach in. We won't have... Yeah, here's the persecution aspect of this. They want you to be so afraid. If we don't mix religion and politics together, they're going to take religion away completely. That's nuts. Have a church in a nonprofit status. We won't have an America that you and I recognize or our parents recognize. That's why we've got to stand up. He's absolutely right. Our parents would not recognize what we have today. It's so completely ass backwards and disconnected from anything that the founding fathers or anybody in a long line of people believed could possibly happen. The founding fathers are rolling in their graves right now at what America has become. Thomas Jefferson and the other founding fathers specifically spoke out against and denounced Christian nationalism or state religions. So when we come to this point in Tulsa, there was a, there was a, large, there was a large budget for this. And I promise I'm not going to take a lot of time with this. I'm just going to tell you these things are not cheap. We don't charge you to come into this venue. That's our decision. And the founder, Kenneth Copeland, says that's not what we're supposed to do. Yeah, Kenneth Copeland, I believe, owns 
not just Flashpoint, but the TV network it's on, Victory Network. I think he owns Victory Network, too. So, yeah. And it's about bringing in all of us together. Because this is one thing I saw in Tulsa, and I've seen it already here in the room. When you guys look around each, around the room, and around your row, just the people next to you, there's something that rises up within you that said, well, there's a lot of people that think just like I do. They feel just like I do. Right. They want to see God back in America just like I do. God never left America. People were perfectly free to pray. Thomas Jefferson and the other founding fathers specifically set up a government that was free from religion intentionally and for the first time in American history, they are trying to reverse that. Now, we may not all agree on every doctrinal issue. We may not all be Christians in here. But the reality is we know why we are here tonight. And tonight you're going to leave not just inspired. Yes, you're going to leave inspired. You're going to leave with information that you didn't know about. But you're also going to leave with this knowledge that there is a God, he is real, and he is alive and well in the state of Georgia. <clears throat> we had a lot of opposition coming to Atlanta. Who would oppose somebody holding some Christian event like this, honestly? But let me tell you, we didn't go to a place. We could have, it'd have been real easy to pick a, to pick a place uh, where we knew that everybody, all the red, red state, a red place where we would know we'd have a really big crowd. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you hear me tonight. It's not about the size of a crowd. Who cares if we have tens of thousands of people? What I do care about, and these men care about, all of us here with Flashpoint, we want to see change in America. I want to see right. change in your neighborhood. I want to see change in your, your legislature. And of course, I want to see change in America. So we're going to take up an offering right now to help cover the cost. The great thing about Tulsa, they helped cover some of the costs for you. That's right. They did. Well, they're taking up an offering like a church. Most of you don't know this, but we do this as a love offering for you. I bet you're sacrificing for all these people, right? You're doing it for them because you love them totally. We right. actually aren't on a payroll. We don't split up offerings. We don't... That's right. You know, uh, in fact, we actually privately sow into each other's ministries. Yeah, because you're all filthy rich. These people are all independently wealthy. They have so much money, you have no idea. They are each individually millionaires, each of them. Right. That's part of the reason why. And they're pretending that they're destitute, that they have nothing that they need your offering to contribute to the church. It's so disgusting, dude. You feel the anointing among us. Yeah, I could true. tell you, Dutch has done this into Mario's tent. Each of us has written checks in each other's ministry. But we'd never come to you and ask, this is real apostolic ministry. We're not coming to you and saying... Oh, no? They're not coming to the people and saying, hey, can I have... That's literally what they're about to do. They literally just said, we're taking up an offering. And now he's saying, we don't come to you and ask for money. Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me with this. We're asking to fund it. But I'm going to tell you this. Those that sow to the spirit will of the spirit reap. Did you feel that thrill when we were singing, I'm proud to be an American? I, I get tears in my eyes when I hear that song. As we were saying USA, and I was thinking, boy, that still has a challenge for me because that's U.S. But that God is saying this country was formed by him and must be preserved by the church. That's really Amen. good. You're not sowing anymore into a budget for TV. That's already we're even saying that. We're saying sow to the spirit so that you can reap the spirit of this great awakening. Amen. You're sowing into an anointing. There's an anointing in the room right here. And when you sow into this anointing, this anointing, this great awakening anointing is going to come into you. That's what the Lord told me to say. That's right. That's good.
That's what the Lord told me to say. Absolutely disgusting, dude. These people are shameless. That's good. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have something to say before I give the information? Pastor Hank, you have anything to say? You know, I just think the key is, you know, I pastor a church, obviously, in Omaha, and it's easy for people in challenging times to look at the challenging times rather than take the challenge and realize an important principle, and it's this. In Genesis chapter 26, it says there was a famine in the land besides the first one, so they were having some challenges. But it says in verse 3 of Genesis 26, God blessed um, uh, Isaac, wasn't it? It was Isaac. Yeah, Isaac, thank you. Blessed Isaac, and in the same year as he sowed or as he gave, he got a thousandfold return in the same year. There's something that happens in challenging times that you're sowing into, you're giving into even tonight. And the Dude, they are going the old uh, prosperity gospel route right now. That's what they're doing. They're saying, if you sow into the ministry, then God will give it back to you tenfold. That's, that's absolutely disgusting, honestly. Those that are watching, and that's this. You are going to release something supernatural in your life, but also in the nation that you're believing for. In Acts chapter 10, uh, at the house of Cornelius, Cornelius was an honorable man, but the Bible says that he was doing something that activated a supernatural release, and he was giving alms. In other words, he was giving offerings. And do you know what happened? Something supernatural, because your giving is connected to the supernatural. And it can also be connected to something the supernatural called the devil. He would love to get you to not give, so then that you begin to see things, you know, break and, 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 and all of that. But I believe we're gonna see gas prices begin to go down. And I've been sowing, saying, God, if my giving is connected to the supernatural, then let it be for the people of this nation who have suffered enough harshness. And sometimes you gotta take your seed and put it right in the face of the devil. Act Take your seed, uh, a.k.a. your money. Put it right in the face of the devil. This is disgusting, dude. I got to write this down. Take your seed and... What was it he said? Take your seed and put it right in the face of the devil. That's what she said. All right, let's keep listening. Acts chapter 10, that's exactly what Cornelius did. An angel shows up and guess what? We Gentiles are speaking in tongues as a result of a man's giving. What will your giving do tonight that will unlock something supernatural, not only in your life, but in this nation that we are believing for? Amen. All you have to do is give us money. That's all you got to do. And that's what amen. I really Thank feel. You. Yeah, amen. All right. Glory. Uh, all right, so if you want to give, and those of you watching on television, it's very easy, If you want, and those in the room, if you want to text to give, uh, you see right here on the screen, you can text the word FLASH and the amount to number 36609. All you do is text that, and it'll prompt you into your dollar amount. If you're giving, uh, if you want to give, those of you watching on television on the web, it's real easy, govictory.com slash fpgive. If you want to call on the phone, 877-281-6297, and there'll be somebody there to take your, take your gift. And by the way, you call that phone number, there's some, and you need prayer, there's somebody on the other end of that phone ready to pray with you. Or if you want to send it by the mail, by snail mail, Victory Channel, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192, just put on there, Flashpoint. Those in the room, if you want to write a check, you can make your check payable to Flashpoint. It'll all go there to help us fund these meetings, these events, and all of the different outreaches. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we got so many ideas of things that we want to do. We're looking forward to seeing what God's going to do here tonight as well as around the country. Amen? All right. Ushers, you may receive the offering, and we're going to uh, get things moving. You know, Dutch, I, I, before, while they're taking up the offering, would you talk a little bit about what happened last week? when you were here oh well oh it's about to get crazy oh um, yes I mean I I have a I have a, a group of people that I'm connected to here and they hosted a conference but I've felt for so for some time now probably 20 years that there is a governmental mantle on the state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta that's why I think it's so significant that we are here and in the early stages of beginning to do this, you chose Atlanta. I remember when God first spoke that to me uh, back in 2003, 
I said, Lord, am I hearing you? I'm, I, I would have thought New York, some of these, you know, DC, but, but when I came to Atlanta and Georgia, he said, this is, this state has a governmental mantle and an ability to impact nations Amen. for me. Amen. And so I felt when we were here last week, I shared, I, I shared a couple of dreams that God has given us. If you watch the post, you know that I'm always sharing a dream, but, but it's clear. He believes himself to be a prophetic dreamer is what he calls it. Again, these are like witches for Jesus, basically. This group of people, the, this group of pastors, uh, of prophets, believe that they have all the same powers that witches have. They just get their power to do all this stuff from God rather than from Satan, where witches get it from. So they believe that there are different types of prophets, and they're capable of receiving prophecy through dreams and through tongues and all this other stuff. They're capable of divination, uh, fortune-telling, and all of it. All the same stuff witches can do in their eyes, except they're getting their power from God instead of Satan. That's it. So, okay. Dutch Jeets is about to tell us about a prophetic dream he had. Go on. To me that we have stepped into a new season. Amen. And we talked about that new season. We talked about what God did the first quarter of the year, what he did the second quarter of the year, and what he's about to do in the third quarter. The third quarter of the year, as far as I'm concerned, this is what we talked about last week, is a, a fresh release yes. of Holy Spirit himself Amen. into this nation. Amen. Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I leave because then I'm going to send Holy Spirit to you. And the word advantage there means to bring together two or more forces or entities, thereby causing an advantage. So he said, I'm going to send him back. He's going to join forces with you. It's going to be to your advantage. Well, one of these dreams that I was talking about, the third quarter of the year represents a fresh infusion of Holy Spirit. I believe it's to be a summer of revival. I believe the great awakening goes to a new level. Amen. The great awakening? goes to a new level. That's a QAnon dog whistle, direct QAnon phrase. In fact, the name of the famous QAnon book is The Great Awakening. These people are QAnon followers, QAnon leaders in large part, so that doesn't surprise me at all. But I like to point out the dog whistles anyway. This summer in the United States of America, and that's what we announced last week in Atlanta, and I'm convinced it's true. I believe it. I believe it. All right, I understand there's a lot of people on in queue. If you're calling in, uh, just stay there. Don't go away. You can have them call back. They'll call you right back. Those of you watching on social media, there's links in the description there of how you can be a part. Uh, somebody tell me in my ear how many we've got watching on social media. We've got a... Yeah, it keeps growing exponentially. So anyway, it's growing. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you for letting me take this time out. Uh, to talk about what we need to do here. All right, earlier, what'd you say? 24, Just 24,000? Okay. <laughs> It'll go up. 24,000 live viewers. That's insane on this show. 24,000. Yeah, don't worry. That number will double. Uh, all right, because a lot of people are thinking we're on at 7 Central anyway. Uh -huh. ah, so that's, that's all right. Well, they'll figure it out. All right, listen, earlier today, so I, did you guys enjoy, those of you that were here early enough, we had a lot of greetings from a lot of people, a lot of our friends, including people like Herschel Walker. and uh, Oh, my God, Herschel Walker. That, that guy's got problems. He's running for Senate right now in Georgia against Raphael Warnock, and he's said some real weird unhinged stuff. People like uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Which, by the way... Oh, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, my God. Please, no. Dog the Bounty Hunter will be with us at the Fort Worth, Texas Flashpoint Live. And if you haven't heard Dog speak... I, I don't know. It just sounds funny saying that. But uh, <laughs> Anyway, when Dog... Some of you will get that in the back row in a minute. Um, so I want you to be there. It's going to... No, I think everybody got it. It just wasn't very funny. It's going to be a blast, and uh, these guys will be there along with Charlie Kirk, July 31st. So you want to make, if you can, get yourself to Fort Worth. But one oh, my God. Charlie Kirk in Fort Worth, Texas on Flashpoint. That's going to be nutty. 
One of my favorite fans and one of my favorite people that love Flashpoint, I love them. I want to play this for those of you at home that didn't get to see it. Diamond and Silk. Oh, if you guys don't know Diamond and Silk, they're QAnon wingnuts. They have a TV show on Lindell TV, Mike Lindell's TV network or whatever. Oh, my God, is it crazy? This is Diamond and Silk on the right talking to Michael Flynn. This one gets a little nutty. To allow this nonsense to continue to occur. That's right. So, so to yeah. the Republican Party, Donald J. Trump, President Donald J. Trump, he did an awful lot for the Republican Party where he raised tons of money. No, no, he didn't. All kinds of money. And he actually, he didn't ask for much. He always, I remember his original campaign in 2016. He was, he was ba basically paying it all out of his own pocket. You know, I remember going into a fundraiser with him one time with a bunch of these, mm -hmm. you know, a, a group of these, what I call muckety mucks, right? They're nice people, you know, but that's, you know, and, and, and they, they want to serve somehow. So that's how they serve. They give, they give, uh, they, they donate. And Trump wa walked in that room and he said, look, um, I appreciate you being here. I'm this, this, uh, this campaign is, is I'm, I'm financing my own campaign. I want you to know that. If you want to give money, you can give money to the Republican Party, and that's fine. And that's going to be for all the sort of the down ballot candidates to allow. No, no, that's a complete and total lie. That did not happen. Donald Trump did not do that. He didn't take donations and then give the money to the Republican Party or whatever. That is total nonsense. See, this is what Michael Flynn does. Anyway, that's. That's who Diamond and Silk are. That's the kind of people that they interview, the things that they talk about. Here's another one where they freak out about the Great Reset conspiracy theory. The World Economic Forum, one of the people involved in it, said that they are trying to build a carbon tracking device to help people that, you know, you give out to people and it'll help them figure out what their carbon footprint is, basically. Global thug. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, I call them their evildoers. Uh-huh. Because why is it that you mm -hmm. feel like your lily made self, self want to track other people? Uh -huh. Like we some type of rabbit dog or some type of animal or something. Or no one is trying to track you, Diamond and Silk. This is absolutely unhinged stuff. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Like what you why are you all sitting your lily made self up there uh -huh. trying to play God when you're not? Come on. When you're not. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And see, this is why we cannot allow Come on. them to chip away at our, our Second, Second Amendment, Amendment. Come because on. we may need it still. Hey, 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 because hey, it hey. looks like these people want to track us, uh -huh. globalize us, uh -huh. and make us into something that we are not. And they're pushing this. Yeah. They are trying to build a carbon tracking device to help people that, you know, you give out to people and it'll help them figure out what their carbon footprint is, basically. And they took that to mean the World Economic Forum is trying to track people through sensors and whatever else. I don't even know. Uh, completely nonsensical, ridiculous. They already track you through your phone anyways. Why would they do it through this thing they're trying to sell you? It's just nonsense, but that's who Diamond and Silk are, if you were curious. So that's who they're talking about on Flashpoint when they say Diamond and Silk. Apparently, Diamond and Silk are going to be joining the show soon. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Flashpoint Live. Listen, in order to get our nation back on track, we have got to take a stand. That's right. In order to get what you want, you have to say no to all the things that you don't want. Insanity is repeating the same thing over again, expecting something different. But the different never comes. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to always get the same thing. Right. God wouldn't bring us to it if he wasn't going to see us through it. So we, the people, have to take a stand. That's right. We, the people, have to speak out. Mm -hmm. We, the people, the people, have to honor and respect our country, our nation, our flag, our constitution. It's all about we, the people. So we, Diamond and Silk, encourage you to make sure you get out and you participate you get involved mm -hmm. and you can start locally that's right and listen i ain't never seen a storm that ain't never ended mm -hmm. 
uh, that that's another subtle reference to QAnon stuff. Like this is number two. The storm is this event in QAnon lore that's supposed to happen that sets everything right. Um, absolutely insane. These people are definite QAnoners. I mean, basically everybody here is a QAnoner. It, it's nuts. This whole thing is nuts. Even it rained 40 days and 40 nights, but it ended. This storm is going to pass. That's right. And in the end, mm -hmm. we, with the help of God, are going to win. If we want better, we're going to have to do better. We all going to have to get involved. All of us are going to have to get involved. And to our heroes and our sheroes, I want to say God bless you. Thank you for all that you continue to do and all that you've done for this country. We really, truly do appreciate you. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Okay, that was the end of Diamond and Silk's whole bit. That was pretty strange. Wonder yeah, heroes and sheroes. <laughs> you mean heroes and heroines. That's the, or heroine. That's the correct word for it. What the hell? Heroes and sheroes. I love it. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful ladies. We love them. Uh, and listen, I know you do too. All right. One of the great, we reached out to a lot of people to see if they could come be a part. And I'm really excited to bring out one of my favorites. Would you please welcome Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh my God. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene's part. You know this is going to be nutty. You know it. Oh, come on, let her hear what you think about it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right, y'all sit down. <laughs> Hello, Georgia. Okay, so Marjorie, we got, I told you about some things I wanted to ask about, but let's get right, let's dive right into. You know, I never talk poorly about people's names because there, it's almost guaranteed that there's going to be somebody in my audience that has the name that I'm talking shit about, but Marge is a bad name, right? Is it just me? Is Marge a bad name? It, it's terrible. It reminds me of just butter, fake butter at that the whole election integrity issue in Georgia. What do these people need to do about that? Well, you know, that's a big issue. If you're, so if I've you're heard. from Georgia, how many people are from Georgia? I, I'm assuming everyone. I, I love this, by the way, absolutely love it. Okay, so we all know that elections are, of course, serious. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I know that President Trump won in the state of Georgia. Wow. I was wondering why this wasn't on YouTube, but I think that's my indication right there. That's not true, by the way. I just want to put that on record. Obviously, Biden won the election. I'm willing to believe Trump won if there's some evidence presented. There is there has not been any evidence up to now. The evidence that they have provided, the 2000 Mules supposed quote unquote documentary is piss poor. It's nonsense. Didn't provide any evidence worth even looking at. We need something better than that. And they haven't provided that. So until they do, sorry, I'm just not believing it. And yet he's not in the White House. Uh, so we, we're... It's because he didn't win. Still pretty upset about it. And here in Georgia, we find ourselves in a difficult situation. I know I watched 2,000 Mules. Did you guys watch it? 2,000 Mules was complete nonsense. Trump lost, plain and simple. The sooner you come to accept that, the sooner we can get back to having an actual democracy. Great movie. Well, also, I proudly objected on January 6th to Joe Biden's... 
And because of all the people I talked to, because of the over 2,000 affidavits that regular citizens signed saying they witnessed voter fraud at risk of perjuring themselves in a court of law, and everything that we looked into, I would object again today, and I would have... Yeah, she's trying to make a case for the idea that the election was definitely stolen, and she's bringing up all of the piss-poor evidence that she used, if you can even call it evidence. Uh, 2,000 mules. What was the other thing she mentioned a second ago? Um, affidavits are piss-poor evidence. They technically qualify as evidence, but they don't meet the standard of evidence you need to be accepted in a court of law. It's nonsense. You basically went up to somebody and you said to them, well, you sign this piece of paper saying that, you know, you this thing or that thing, you blah, blah, blah. You know, you saw Donald Trump win or don't you believe that Donald Trump won the election or whatever. OK, great. You signed this piece of paper saying you believe that doesn't mean it's actually true. I don't care about affidavits. We need evidence, real hard evidence. Affidavits are worthless to me. The whole premise behind the 2000 Mules movie was, I think they purchased cell phone GPS data or something, and they saw like a bunch of people with cell phones walk by drop boxes like multiple times like they saw them pass drop boxes like every day for like a week or something and they said look look proof that there were people going to these drop boxes multiple times no that's proof that they walked past a drop box multiple times i do i walk past drop boxes all the time people have regular schedules they go between home and work if there's a drop box between home and work for them they're gonna pass it that's not a surprise 2000 mules used that as their basis for proving the election was stolen seriously you're gonna have to give me something something better than that that is piss poor fraud at risk of perjuring themselves in a court of law and everything that we looked into I would object again today and I would object again tomorrow and I'm very honest about that she asked for immunity for the January 6th commission did she I, I hadn't heard that she asked for immunity but I did hear that she asked for um, a pardon from Donald Trump for her actions on January 6th I heard that and that is damning that is deeply damning she is a traitor to the United States. In my mind, she has committed treason. If not for that, then for trying to get the United States to pull out of NATO to make this whole process easier for Russia, overtaking Ukraine. The fact that she's calling for that, endorsing that, pushing for that, maybe that's not treason in the technical sense but it's treason in spirit she is a traitor to the u she's a traitor to the u.s government and should be treated as such disgusting now talking about elections in our state we we feel like we still have problems don't we yes, yes. <laughs> yeah we feel like we we don't understand exactly what's going on but we don't trust our elections. But I'll tell you this, here's what I'm concerned about everyone. We have a major threat coming in November. And, and I'm gonna say there's three of them, and I don't think there's enough people talking about this. Uh, one of them is named Stacey Abrams. If you're watching this five years in the future, Stacey Abrams is well-respected in Georgia and is the Democratic Georgia candidate for governor right now. She'll be going up against the current governor, which is Brian Kemp, in Georgia this November in the primary. So we'll see what happens. Exactly, exactly. Well, there's another one you're not paying attention to that's running for attorney general. Her name is Jen Jordan. Do you guys know about her? No, you don't know about her, but you should, and here's why. She's a radical progressive, radical progressive. She's also an attorney. 
and the, I've been watching her Twitter for the past, I don't know, over a week now. All she's been talking about is abortion. She says as Attorney General of the state of Georgia, she will not uphold a heartbeat law here in our state. She will not enforce that. Well, right, she won't enforce it. So that means that as the Attorney General, she has the choice to uh, charge people with crimes or not. And as the Attorney General, she would choose not to charge somebody if they got an abortion. I mean, it's still risky. It's still extremely dangerous to go down the road of, you know, setting up an abortion like place in the state or whatever anyway. So I wouldn't probably, even if the attorney general said that they won't enforce that law. But yeah, that's progress. I mean, it's something better than nothing, I guess. she won't enforce is SB 202. She won't enforce our new laws about elections. She won't. Now, this is something you need to understand. I'm mad about our elections, very upset about them, but I can tell you something. We don't want Stacey Abrams as our governor. We don't want a radical George Soros backed progressive attorney general. Dude, the George Soros stuff is so deeply anti-Semitic and conspiratorial, it's disgusting. That will not prosecute crime and will not uphold laws that we know are important in our state. And then we have someone running, and this is where we're all going to have a little trouble because I'm still having trouble. We have a, another woman, it's like a trifecta, everyone. Another woman running for Secretary of State against... Brad Raffensperger. Apparently they hate Brad Raffensperger. Again, if you're watching this five years in the future, Brad Raffensperger is the Secretary of State in Georgia. And he he's the person that Donald Trump called and said, I just need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. Find me 11,000 votes, so on and so forth. That's like a smoking gun. It's pretty likely that Trump will face serious consequences for for doing that for pressuring somebody like that that that's pretty serious stuff so we'll see what happens well you know i supported jody heiss but we have a choice in november so we 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 are we have problems here now i will tell you this though here's where i'm at I'm one of those people, I'm going to show up for work every single day and I'm going to work as hard as possible. I'm one of those people, if there's a fight, I'm not sitting on the sides, not joining in the battle. That's true enough. She's actually gotten in altercations with Lauren Boebert. It turns out they hate each other. I had no idea. They actually got in a physical altercation and had to be separated at one point recently. No joke. So when it comes to voting and it comes to our elections here in Georgia, you better bet I'm going to be out there and I'm going to be encouraging every single person to vote. Because if we stay home and we sit it out, you know what happens? We hand it over to the radical left. And I love my state. I've lived here. I was born here. I grew up here, just like many of you. And there... You know, this is one of the problems right here, what we're looking at. They have turned the right has turned voting into a religious issue. And when religion comes into the equation, it becomes significantly easier to control people. And that's that's what we're seeing here. It is a religious obligation to vote for whoever they tell you to vote for Donald Trump or whatever. This is actually the exact reason why it's against the law. People should not get uh, they should not mix religion and politics it's so deeply wrong because it makes it that much easier to manipulate people there is no way that we are going to hand over our home state of georgia right. to the radical godless left Uh, let me get your opinion on something else. Uh, a lot of these people had to drive. They're not all from Georgia, uh, but a lot of these people had to drive a long way to get here, or they took an, a really expensive airplane flight and that probably got delayed. And uh, they paid a lot of money for a gallon of gas. Is there any hope? 
God, it's just constant culture war issue after culture war issue with these people, isn't it? Like nonstop. They always have to find some way to route this back to Joe Biden evil. And uh, they paid a lot of money for a gallon of gas. Is there any hope? Can, what can we have that you know? Give the people some hope about gas prices. Give me some. You know, there's, they act like the president has a knob on his desk that can change the value of gas or the price of gas at will. Just he has a knob that he spins and it makes it more expensive or less expensive. If Biden could lower the price of gas, then he would have a long time ago. For one thing. And for another thing, gas prices are coming down right now. This clip isn't that old. Gas prices were dropping actively when this video came out. So I'm really not sure why he's even complaining about this issue. I mean, yeah, gas prices are high at this immediate moment, but they are significantly better than they were like a month ago. They are currently dropping. I think this is all about teeing Marjorie Taylor Greene up to fight in the culture war once again. <laughs> Well, let's pray for a miracle. <laughs> yep. All right. Your miracle happened, Marge. Your miracle took place because gas prices have dropped. Are you going to... You blamed Biden when this happened. Are you going to thank Biden now that it's being solved? All right, let's talk, let's talk about well, no, it. I want you to break it down. Why are we really in this situation? I think we know, and I believe you, you know... But sometimes the obvious just has to be restated, so. Yeah, before she does, I'll tell you why we're in this situation with high gas prices. Energy costs shot through the roof when Russia went to war with Ukraine. Over the course of the pandemic, the countries in the world had to pay people to stay home, or they were releasing stimuluses, which shot inflation through the roof afterward. So inflation combined with energy prices going up because of Ukraine combined with the oil and gas companies price gouging people because they want to get richer. That's why. Those are the real reasons. Now, what's she going to say? Biden, right? Go ahead. All right, but I'm not going to give you the simple answer. I'm going to give you the honest answer. And I think that's the only way to talk about this issue. Well, we can start with number one, Joe Biden and the Democrats. Knew it. I called it. Didn't I tell you that was going to happen? I told you. Democrats, right? <laughs> number one, Joe Biden and the Democrats are doing everything they can to destroy the fossil fuel industry. They want, they do not want you to ever drive a gas or diesel combustion engine ever again. They want you driving electric vehicles, ladies and gentlemen. Ideally, yeah, you wouldn't have to pay a dime for gas anymore. How awesome would that be? Why are these people seriously trying to force everybody in the world to drive diesel and gas engines when they're more expensive? They're, they're forcing people to drive them and then they're complaining about paying for gas. If you don't want to pay for gas, drive an electric vehicle. I mean, I know it's not as simple as buying an electric vehicle, but Democrats are trying to make the process of getting electric vehicles easier, and she is losing her mind over this. Really? This blows my mind. This is like self-immolation. They're hurting America and then blaming the Democrats for the damage that they do. Because they worship the climate, and they very much want to, and this is the entire Democrat Party. They See, they have to turn everything into a god, because if they can make it out to be a god then they can turn it into false worship and heresy. If you are in favor of climate reform, then you are a heretic against God and you're going to hell. They want to pass the Green New Deal. Well, let me tell you the problem with the Green New Deal other than the fact AOC, who has the intelligence of less than a kindergartner, by the way. Who? Was that Marjorie Taylor Greene? Who did you say has the intelligence of less than a kindergartner? I mean, do I really need to go down this road? Do I really need to prove which one has the intelligence of less than a kindergartner? Or are we already on the same page with this? It, 
it's true. I work with her, I know. But anyways, the Green New Deal, the problem with the Green New Deal, other than the fact that it brings carbon down to zero, which doesn't make sense because what are trees and plants like? Oh my God, dude. Are you kidding me? This is one of the dumbest things I have ever heard anybody say in my life. 3540. What are trees going to breathe if we bring carbon to zero? Oh my God, dude. Does it get stupider than this? Does it get stupider than this? For good measure, let me explain. We're not trying to bring carbon output to zero. We're trying to bring carbon to net neutral. That means it's equal, roughly, to how much the trees are absorbing. Never ask that question. The answer is always yes. <laughs> exactly. So right now, we're putting in... I'm just throwing out a number. I don't even know what it is. But say we're putting 400 parts per million of carbon into the atmosphere every day and trees are absorbing 300 parts per million right it's significantly different than that i'm just throwing out a number um if we increase the number of trees in the world or and or decrease the amount of carbon that we're using we will reach net neutral net zero so the trees will be absorbing all of the extra carbon that we're putting into the atmosphere. We're not trying to remove all carbon from the atmosphere. I cannot believe that I even have to explain this. This is like a, an alternate reality that I'm in right now. Carbon. And China, China loves this. China loves it so much because China wants to be the number one superpower in the world. And they not only militarily, but economically. And let me explain, here's the biggest problem. China dominates the battery market as in electric vehicles. That's what they need batteries. And they dominate the market by over 85%. America doesn't compete. We're less than 5%. You know how we increase competition? I, first of all, I don't know that this is even true. She could be fabricating this, and more than likely is. Don't trust a word out of her mouth unless you look it up directly yourself. But even if this were true, you know how we compete? You know how we get better? Encourage people to go to college, get educations, increase diversity, cancel student loan debt, make people healthier by fixing health care in the United States. We make this a better place to live so more people will want to come over here and live here. We're suffering from brain drain right now, and this is a problem that Russia dealt with immediately after they started the, the war with Ukraine. All of the smart people in, in the country who innovate and build and create and invent they're all leaving right now, Russia, because they don't want to be a part of what's happening at this moment. And that's, that's going to happen to the United States, too. It's already happening in large part. All of the innovators, all of the intelligent people who are creating and inventing, they're leaving because they don't want any part of this mess, this disturbing mess. So that's how we actually solve the problem and, and become... That's how we get ourselves at the top of the heap. America's strength is in our diversity, actually. The more diverse America is, the more people are comfortable with coming over here, the more free they are to build and learn and educate themselves and invent and all that stuff. None of this connects. She is just a nationalist with nationalist goals that wants to turn this into a white theocracy. It's disturbing stuff, man. Anyway, I'll tell you what, that's where I'm going to end it for now. Stick around for the next part if you're interested, and let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this.